What's up everybody? Bill with Honest Oak Permaculture Hop Farm and it's time to turn the compost pile again. All right y'all, so it's been two days. Time to turn the compost pile. And let's uncover it. Still got the tarp on it. Let's see what this uncovering looks like. Now we're gonna need to uh, cover this tarp with this shovel real quick. It's it's windy today. Okay. So here's the outside of the pile. Looking good, breaking down, definitely getting darker, getting a lot harder to distinguish everything. Hey guys, I did remember my thermometer today. Looky, looky. We'll be giving you guys a better temperature on what the pile's like. Outside, it's about 50 to 52 degrees. Well, depending on where you're standing. If you're in the shade, it's a lot cooler. But right here in the sun, we're at 52, about 53 degrees. So let's temp the top of this pile like we have before. And it's climbing, but not like it was climbing before. So the top of the pile is maybe going to get to 60 degrees, 58 to 60 degrees. Let's dig down a little bit deeper. Right, let's get down in here a little bit. See if we can't get a better temperature. Now towards the this is getting towards the end of its of the compost pile's life or cycle. So it shouldn't be getting as hot as it used to. I can feel it starting to warm up there in the middle. Climbing faster. We're at 80. Alright, so it's hitting right there about 93.8, 93.9, bouncing back and forth. So today's the what 14th day. We've only got two more turns after this. Four more days. And it's starting to cool down. So we hit our peak the past three turns. And now it's starting to go back down and, and cool down a little bit. All the microorganisms are not as prevalent in this pile as they were. So they're not feeding. There's not as much to eat for them. So they're not feeding as much. So let's go ahead and turn this thing. Get our thermometer out of there. Oh, by the way, I'm feeling much better today. Thank you to everybody that wished me good health and put some good vibes out there for me to get better. Feeling much better today. turning this pile if you didn't I'm gonna leave it down in the description but it was raining really really hard when I was turning it so all the materials got really wet might be a reason why it didn't heat up to quite where we want it to be we want it to be over 100 degrees around 120 would have been great today for a, t uh, for a temp uh, but it only got to about 94 so I think one of the things that happened is there's just too wet, too much water. And when you get too much water in it, it pushes out a lot of the air because there's no room for air when there's water in there. So the air escapes and the water stays and the bacteria and the microorganisms don't have any air, any oxygen, one of the fuel sources they need to, uh, to reproduce. So 
So with this being so wet, I'm making sure when I turn it, fluff it up real good to make sure I get air in between all the particles. It's heavy. I won't need to wet it down today with the hose. I brought the hose over here in case I did, but I definitely don't need to. It's too wet. So turning it's really important right now to make it to make sure it doesn't go anaerobic. If you let it stay this wet and don't give it any air, it's going to start stinking and turn anaerobic. And that's not the type of compost pile I'm trying to build here. It smells good. It doesn't stink right now, so the. Uh, the anaerobic park didn't set in yet. I think that's one good reason about turning it every two days is because you can look at your pile on a regular basis and see what you need to do to it. The pile's too wet. Just make sure you give it a lot of air. We're gonna do a squeeze test to see if it's too wet. Let's see. Let's, let's do the old traditional squeeze test. All right, we got our materials. Remember, if we squeeze it, we should get water coming out of it, right? Now this is, it didn't rain all day yesterday. So it's had about 24 hours to dry out. And there's just water gushing out of this thing. I'm, you know, I, I can tell it's just one muddy piece almost when you squish it together like that. Oh, look at this, buddy. I don't know if you can see him. A little worm in there doing some work. Let's go put him back. The tarp I'm using is not the best, you probably noticed that. You got a better tarp, probably keep the rain out better, keep the moisture in more. Let's give a shot of the middle pile and get a temp at the same time. Alright, we'll let that climb while we do a walk around. And I'll show you some of the pieces. It's getting harder to distinguish, just like before. Everything's getting darker. There's really no smell coming out of it. Still, when you get really close, you can find little wood chips and then leaves. Some grass. This pile's warm, but it's not hot. Alright, let's keep turning this thing, guys. Definitely seen a lot of worms in here though. It's starting to sweat. That's some Arizona wind GDP. for the wind if you can hopefully you can hear me it's getting a lot harder to distinguish the materials until you get really close onto it once we get really close we can see the bigger wood chips some of the grasses still leaves I, mean, I took I took my time putting it back together this time instead of like last time if you watched the last video I, uh, it was raining, I was still sick, I did not feel like doing it, so I turned it as quickly as I could, uh, so I, I didn't turn it the best, I didn't build it the best, I just, I, I tried to get the job done quick. This time I took a little bit more time to make sure it was more volume all the way to the top, a little more even, and made sure it got lots of air. All right, let's cover this thing up with the tarp. So what did we learn about? What 
we learn on this turn? What do we learn? If it's too wet, like it was, that's also going to hinder it getting to the temperatures that we need it between that 130 and 165 range. This turn, it's supposed to get a little bit cooler. It's supposed to start dropping. 120 is where I like to have seen it. It only got to about 94. Mostly, I think, because it was too wet. The day I turned it, the time before, it was raining pretty good. And it's like, you take a cup, you got a cup, no water in it, nothing whatever. You got just a cup and air in it. When you take that cup and you fill it full of water, it pushes all the air out. So there's no air in there. Pretty much the same thing happened in the compost pile. As I was turning it, putting new materials in the new spot, it was raining really good, and it was soaking up all in that in that compost pile and pushing most of the air out. So it didn't have one of its key ingredients. Remember, the key ingredients is carbon, nitrogen, water, and oxygen. You get too much of one of them, it's going to mess with another one. Kind of the yin and yang thing there. So there we had too much water, which then messed with the oxygen because it pushed the air out of the pile and it, it was, the, the microbes didn't have that, that key nutrient they needed. Don't fall. I see you guys rocking on me there. Hold on now. That wind's picking up. Whoa. Whoa. So what do we learn? Next time when I turn it, I'll make sure it's not too wet. Maybe I could have skipped a day when I did it in the complete rain like that. Maybe, maybe that wasn't the correct way to do it. Maybe I should have just kept it tarped and then turn it immediately the next the next day, or if it let off a little bit that day, then turn it then. But I think turning it in that, in that rain when it was coming down was good. It really hindered one of the key ingredients, the oxygen. What else did we learn? Volume was good. Well, the volume's still the same pretty much. It's it's pretty much still the same height. It's pretty much still the same width. We haven't lost very much volume. And that's key to how, to how you build your pile. If you put too much nitrogen in your pile, not enough carbon, your pile's gonna shrink a lot. And like if I did nothing but, but grass clippings, I could start with a pile this big and end up with a pile half that big or a quarter that big. Uh, but with adding carbon, it helps balance that ratio out and you should pretty much have the same size pile as you started when you do the right ratio which is 25 to 1. 25 carbon and that comes, how do you know when you have 25 to 1? That comes with really experience. Right. Guys, don't, you okay? You alright? You guys okay? Yeah, I see you fall over there. Can you go to the ER? No? Look alright. Look like you're doing okay. Whew. No blood, no foul, right? Okay. Well, what were we talking about before you fell over? Oh, carbon nitrogen ratio, 25 to one. That's just kind of off experience. You kind of need to uh, make your own compost pile. Start it, do it again. Mess up, do it again. Mess up, do it again until you get it right. Um, also knowing that wood chips is gonna be a lot higher in carbon than something like leaves. So you're going to need more nitrogen to break down wood chips than you would leaves. I'm just, I guess, kind of knowing the. Uh, you guys are running all over again. Right? I guess just kind of knowing or keeping an idea of your nitrogen ratios in the materials that you're using and the carbon ratios in your materials that you're using, and then trial and error really. The smell, okay, the smell of this pile. My sniffer's starting to work a little bit better. Not, it's not at the par yet, uh, but I, I can't tell a smell. It doesn't smell anaerobic. Um, if I'd have left that water sitting in there, in that pile, and didn't turn it, and as wet as it was, it would have turned really anaerobic because of the lack of air that's in there. And when it got really stinky and slimy, just a nasty pile. Wind's picking up a little bit more. Appreciate y'all for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure you give me a thumbs up, like, and subscribe.